In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a fruit face. Now, fruit face is simply pieces of fruit cut out and then arranged strategically on the page to make it resemble a face. So you can see an example here of one that I created earlier today. Um, to get started on making this fruit face, there's two things you need to do. The first thing you need to do is go into Google Images and find some pieces of fruit, save them onto your computer, and that way we can bring them into our editing program in a moment and start to put our face together. If you're in my class, I'll give you access to all these items of fruit, uh, but feel free to go into Google Images and find your own if you've got some other ideas in mind. Uh, the second thing you need to do once you've saved all these items of fruit into your account is go onto your web browser and load up a website called PhotoP. It's PhotoP.com. Okay, and when you load PhotoP, this is the website you will be greeted with. Now, for those of you that haven't heard of PhotoP before, it's very much like Photoshop. It's a program we use to edit and manipulate images. Down the left-hand side of the page, you've got a toolbox with a whole lot of different tools that you can use to edit your images. Running across the top of the page, you've got a menu bar. Below that is a properties bar where we can adjust some settings uh, for each of our tools that we use. And on the right-hand side are our panels, and I'll tell you more about panels as the tutorial progresses. Down the far right-hand side of the page, you can see some ads. Okay, because PhotoP is a free program, it does throw a few ads off to the side there just to help um, the creators earn a little bit of money. All right, so to get started in PhotoP today on making this fruit face, all you need to do is click on this new project button in the middle of your page. A box will pop up asking you what sizes you would like to use for your fruit face. What we're going to do is we're going to go down the bottom here where you see all these different templates. I want you to choose the print template because we're going to be printing our fruit face out later. And I want you to choose the A4 size. We're going to be printing it out on an A4 piece of paper. Once you've selected that, you'll see the dimensions up the top here change. Um, they're all exactly what we want, so click on Create. You'll see a white canvas appear on your screen. That is an A4 sized canvas. Now the first thing we need to do with our fruit face is put a head down. Okay, if we look at the example again, you can see that I've used a watermelon for my head and then stacked everything else on top of it and around it. All right. So to get our um, head in, what we need to do is we need to go to File and Open. And from your selection of fruits, you need to choose a piece of fruit that looks like a nice looking head. Okay, you don't have to copy me here. You can go off and do your own thing. Okay, things like coconuts would work well. Uh, watermelon looks good. Apples, limes, pears, pineapples. They will all work well. I'm going to go with watermelon for my example though. So when you open up the watermelon, it opens it up in a new tab. So you can see you've got tabs across the top of your page here. We've still got our new project here, which is going to be our fruit face. And then we've got the watermelon tab as well. So what we need to do is we need to cut this watermelon out from this image. So cut it out off the white background and then go and paste it over here onto our new fruit face background. All right, so to do that, there's two ways I like to cut things out in PhotoP. I'm going to show you the easy way first. Looking down your toolbox here on the left hand side, the fourth tool down here are your selection tools. You've got object selection tool, quick selection tool, and your magic wand. Okay, to access them, you just need to hold your left mouse button down on this um, tool here. And I'm going to go with the quick selection tool. It will allow you to make a quick selection. So what I'm going to get you to do is to click on it, come over to your watermelon, and simply click and drag. Oops, we need to select a layer first. So click on the background layer, my mistake. And then we click and drag across this watermelon. And you only need to do it for like a second. And you'll see this black and white line appear around the outside of the watermelon. That's a selection that you have made by using this quick selection tool. Okay, so what we can do now that we've got this watermelon selected is go up to edit and cut. And you see that it cuts it out from the background. We can now go over to our new project tab, go to edit and paste. And it pastes our watermelon in. Okay, and we're just going to be doing this over and over again today with different items of fruit and just stacking them on top of each other, around each other, and behind each other to make our face work. One other thing you're going to need to do, obviously, is change the size of your items of fruit and move them around. And to do that, we just use the first tool in our toolbox, the Move tool. Now, when you first load up PhotoP, I'm pretty sure these boxes up the top here, Auto Select and Transform Controls, won't be turned on. 
okay, which makes it hard to resize your fruit. So turn your transform controls on to do that. And just for ease of use, turn auto select on. Now, when you're resizing your fruit, I don't want you to just grab it from the top and stretch it like that, because as you can see, it deforms it. Don't grab it from the sides either and pull it out, because again, it deforms it. And it doesn't look like a watermelon anymore. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to drag from a corner. And while you're dragging from a corner, hold shift. If you do that, if you drag from a corner and you hold shift, it keeps your item in proportion so it won't lose its shape and it won't start to look a bit silly. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to move my head down towards the bottom of the page because I'm going to put some hair on mine and I'm going to put some ears in as well. So I don't want it too big. I want it big, but not too big. Probably about that size there. It's good. When you're happy with it, press the tick at the top to say you're happy with those changes. You can click off it and you've now got your head intact. Next thing we might add in is some eyes. Okay, if I go back to my example, I use kiwi fruit for my eyes. So let's go and open up some kiwi fruit. Okay, with my kiwi fruit here, all I'm going to do is grab my quick selection tool, click and drag across the kiwi fruit until you see the lines. Those little black and white lines go around the kiwi fruit. You can then go up to edit, cut, go back to the new project tab, and go edit, paste. And you've got your eye in. So let's go and grab our move tool, move it into position. If you think it's a little bit big, by all means, resize it a little bit. I think it is a little bit big. So I'm just going to whack it about there. Okay, you can copy that and paste it again if you would like. You might have to do a bit of a resize on it again. Remember to drag from a corner and hold shift when you're resizing. Okay, press the tick when you're happy. They don't look too bad, those eyes. All right, coming in next, I'm going to put a nose. So I'm going to go to File and Open and grab myself a pair. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. We've got a reflection below the pair. Okay, that's going to cause an issue for this quick selection tool. If I click and drag across my pair, you can see it selects the pair well, but if we zoom in, it's selected some of the shadow down here as well. Now there is ways to get around it. You can go up the top here and press this minus button, which is the subtract selection tool, and run over the reflection there, and it will deselect it. But then it doesn't quite get all of the pair again. So you can grab the plus sign and try and select the rest of that pair. But it's a bit of an ongoing battle. Okay, it's kind of a messy select. So what I'm going to do is go to select and just deselect what I've got done there. I'm going to use a different tool to select this pair. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso to uh, select tool. So that's the third tool down in my toolbox. I need to hold my left mouse button down on it and choose the second option, the polygonal lasso select tool. Now I'm going to zoom in on my pair here by pressing Control plus. And I'm simply going to click my way around the pair, making selection as I go. So just watch what I do here. I'm going to click once, just on the edge of the pair. And as I move my mouse now, a line is following my cursor. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to click around the inside of the skin of the pair. I'm just going click, 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 click. And take your time as you do this. The neater and the slower you go, the better your cut's going to be. If you make mistakes here, you pretty much have to start again and start cutting it out from scratch. You can see as we get down to the bottom here, we can just make our own selection. We don't have to get that reflection in. We just go around the base of the pair, going click, 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 click. Nice little clicks. And then we can work our way back up the other side of the pair. Now you might see when I get to the edge of the page here, if I move my mouse up, PhotoP automatically scrolls up. Another way to move your screen around is hold the space bar in, and you'll see my mouse cursor change to a little white hand, and that allows me to just drag the screen up, and I can keep on going. Now for my nose, I don't want that stem or stalk of the pear, so I'm just going to go straight past it. And when I go back to the start, I'm going to click on my starting point, and you can see the black and white selection box now appears around my pear. Okay, that's a better looking selection than what this quick selection tool was going to do for me. So the polygonal lasso tool is the second way that you can cut out your pieces of fruit. Once you've got it selected, just go back to edit and cut like usual. Go back to your new project tab, paste it in. Okay, there is our pair. 
So just stick that somewhere between the eyes. If you want to rotate these shapes a little bit, all you need to do is use your move tool, and just hover around one of the corners and you'll see your arrows change a little, I mean your cursor changes to little black arrows and that will allow you to rotate things around a bit. So I'm going to rotate the nose a little bit. And that's basically it. We're going to keep going now just to finish off our fruit face using those same techniques. I'm going to speed up the video here. Okay, but you can see my finished product um, if you just fast forward the video a bit, but I'll have it going at pretty quick speed if you want to see how I do it. So I'm going to open up oranges for my ears. Use the quick selection tool to select the orange. Cut it. Paste it. Actually, before I do speed up, what I'm going to do is just show you one trick here about how to get these ears looking good. At the moment, this ear doesn't look too flush because it's sitting on top of the head. What I want to do is actually put it behind the watermelon. And the way we do that is we come over here to our layers panel on the right hand side. Layer 5 here is my orange. Okay, If I select my orange, you'll see that layer 5 highlights. What I'm going to do with layer 5 is drag it down below layer 1. Layer 1 is my watermelon. Layer 5 is my orange. And you can see that layer 5 now is behind the watermelon, so it's hidden half of that orange. Okay, and it makes it look like a bit of a better ear, I suppose. I'm going to paste that in again and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to put it over the right-hand side. Layer 5 that's appeared here. Drag it below the watermelon. There we go. We've now got two ears. That look pretty good. So feel free to play around with your layers, rearranging them. Whatever is down the bottom of your layers list is in the background. Whatever is on the top of your layers list will be on top in your image. So that's how we get our little oranges behind the watermelon head. Okay, so I'm going to keep going now. I'm going to get some cherries for earrings. So I'm going to use the selection tool again for that. Now, if you are still listening to me, what we can do here is we, or what we want to do is flip this earring around. We want to basically mirror it. So you can see here it's facing the wrong way. I'm just going to go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontally. That will flip him around. That fixes the earring for that side. So let's just give that a bit of a resize so he's similar to the other earring. All right, if you're still watching along, that's my fruit face done. The last thing I want you to do is I want you to use the text tool here, I'm sorry, the type tool, and write your name along the bottom, just so we know who it was created by. So I'm going to stick, um, well, I'm going to grab the type tool first of all, and then click down the bottom here. And I'm just going to write created by, oops, I'm on the wrong language here. Created by, and then put your name. So I'll put Mr. Bait up. Um, now feel free to highlight this. And up the top here, where you've got your properties, change your font. Okay, you've got stacks of different, whoops, stacks of different fonts here to use. You've got previews of them all. So find a cool font that you like the looks of. It's easily readable. Okay, um, let's try this one. I'll just take a second to load in. And there you go. Also feel free to click this box here and change the color. 
Okay, so if you want to have more of a fruity kind of color, let's go greeny color for this one. Click OK. You can change your size here as well, your little lever where you can adjust your size. So make sure it's nice and big, that fills up a good chunk of the bottom there. If I zoom out by pressing Control Zero, that's basically my food face done. So there's two ways you can save it here. If it's coming to the end of the lesson, and you're not quite finished your work and you want to come back to it next lesson and save um, and work on it then, you'll need to go to File and Save as PSD. What that will do is it will save all these layers here so you've got access to all the layers when you come back and you can manipulate them and delete them and do whatever you need to. Okay, that's if you're not quite finished. If you are finished though and you know you're not going to come back and edit this at all, then I want you to go to File export as and choose the second option there jpeg okay when it asks what quality you want to save it as 80 percent is pretty much fine that brings the size in under one megabyte which is good it's not going to chew up too much room in your account so you can click on save and it will download it to your downloads folder you'll need to go into your downloads folder and move that so just cut it out and paste it you know over into your uh, media arts folder when you are done, what I want you to do is email the JPEG file to your teacher so they can print it out in color and stick it up on the wall for everyone to see.